Hey YouTube, different idea today. I don't know whether anyone, anyone will watch this or whatever, but um, Black Sabbath records. You may have gathered that I pay, play quite a lot of Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath are probably my favourite band, apart from maybe BB Metal. Um, because they're still doing albums. But um, yeah, so I've got a lot of records. that if, when it, They used to be, if you look at my older videos when I was in my old house, I used to have them all on a rack in the wall. And I, I never got rid of any of them. I've still got them all. They're just kind of locked away. They're still sort of in order. Took me quite a while to find these. Um, so this is just basically the Black Sabbath albums. I don't think I've got all of them. Um, I kind of lost interest a little bit in the sort of later on ones. But uh, just, so not really in any order, just and it's going to be quite unpopular quite a lot of people because I like ones that probably other people don't quite like. So the first album, absolute classic, was it 1970 or something? Um, it's a belter. It's the, I think, it could be argued it's the, the start of heavy metal and I think at the time this came out nothing was like this anywhere um this isn't there's a valuable one i think it's on vertigo records as i think it's a big issue on names this is a uk version of the album which has got a couple of tracks different um I, my original one i had of this which i think i probably gave away to somebody i used to teach guitar years ago so i think i probably gave it to one of my students um, was that it wasn't a gatefold? It was like a, a reissue reissue on super floppy vinyl. This one, I will have bought because it's got the inverted crucifix on the inside, which was nothing to do with um, the band. Uh, they didn't at the time. I don't even think they knew the album was coming out. I think they, not, they were on tour in Germany or something, and then they, they found out they were in the top forty. And like, oh, the album's out. So they'd never seen the cover or anything. I want to get after the end of a Black Sabbath band. I, I want to make a, a day trip to this place. It's still there, apparently. I don't know where it is. In England somewhere. Um, and take a photo of us standing in front of this sort of mill thing in front of a pond. Uh, yes. So, the, the differences between this one and the, um, the the CD version or the American version is Warning, I think. Is that not on the CD? And I think some of the, some of the, um, the CD slash American versions have got like the... the songs are divided up i seem to remember sleeping village i used to i, I had a, a black sabbath the anthology guitar book where i lent guitar from which i gave to my girlfriend um and it was it was called sleeping village medley with a bit of finger or something like that it was called so they had slightly different names but it's got that, one of the reasons i like this one is it's got like a a poem who have no idea who wrote it uh which kind of goes along with the start of you know, you, you sort of read this poem and then you put the record on sort of halfway through it and then you get the thunder and the rain and then it comes in with the, the classic opening track. So you get Black Sabbath, The Wizard, Behind the Wall of Sleep, NIB, Evil Woman, Sleeping Village and Warning. Um, Warning's a bit of a jam. All the other ones are bona fide classics. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is on a fancy record label. It probably actually say on it when I bought it. 99, yeah. So this, this isn't my original one. Um, it was... 95 or something I probably bought the original one so basically somebody should just buy them just if you don't have this then why not really it's it's absolutely awesome pure moody and fantastic second one this is my original record this is Paranoid um, which has got all the hits on it sort of thing so is that another record in it no it's just not in the thing me this is the one with the Mad Vertigo label so when you put it on your um, I used to write on some of these uh, when I started buying records where I bought them so I bought this in the record exchange, twenty one one ninety four for two quid. Um, so I, when you put this th these, this record label on your turntable, it's meant to look like you're falling down a hole. But what it actually looks like is like a potter's wheel, you know, when like they're making, you're sitting with a wheel and you're making a clay pot. That's what it looks like. So I'll put this back in here. Um, I used to have this on my um, wall. I, 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 got, I, I got my dad to photocopy this picture at work. And I had it uh, sellotaped to the door of my last house, and that was cool. And I always wanted Aussie's trousers. He's got like trousers with sort of leather bits on them. I always thought that was cool. Um, so you'll you'll know the songs on this: War Pigs, Paranoid, Planet Caravan, which is was covered by Pantera. I think, uh, and after the end, we pretty much played the the whole. The, the, we've got a new singer now, but the, the the previous singer was really good at doing this early stuff. So we pretty much played the whole first album and pretty much the whole second album as well. Um, War Pigs, Paranoids, Planet Caravan, Iron Man, played all of them. Electric Funeral, I don't think we played that one. Hand of Doom played that. Rat Salad, uh, very much album tracks, and then Fairies Wear Boots, which is a. 
which wasn't a song that I absolutely really stuck out to me as being absolutely fantastic until I joined the After the End band and then we started playing and going, oh no, really, it is really good. I don't know why that, that one kind of skipped by me a bit. Distributed in Australia. This is an Australian version of it. Who knew? Uh, silly album cover. Guy with a neon outfit and a helmet on. Um, I've actually got the Quadraphonic or the 5.1 mix version of this. I think it's got extra tracks on it as well on CD. But its records are more interesting. Um, so Paranoid, classic. Uh, I think maybe because it's the most famous one, I probably didn't listen to this one as much. And it, it didn't, maybe doesn't mean as much to me as the first one did, just because, I don't know, there's, there's something about this album. It's amazing. It's pure jazzy or something. I don't know. Yeah, so Paranoid. Then we've got Master Reality. Yeah, this one's in a... This is uh, the original issue of it. And I've actually kept it in a bag because it might be worth some money. So this is um, it's like a sort of mad plasticky cover, and it's got Master Reality written on black on a black background. You can see that's what was copied for the After the End logo, and the later on records in the CD have the Master Reality written in grey, like that logo. But the real record has um, it's it's actually it's, it's flat now, but it's actually a box, which was it was squished when I got it. But um, this came with a, a poster, but I never got the poster. But what it does have it's, it's on the vertical label, but this one's got the vertical label and the outside sleeve. Which is pretty cool. Um, so th this one, a bit, bit the original issue, issue of it. It's like, so then you can see why I don't. I, I stopped buying records because of the price of them. This was Master Reality twenty six one ninety five, one pound twenty five. You know I mean, it's like it's ridiculous these things. Isn't, these are these are all kind of all, and all right, Nick as well. Well, they're a bit scratchy, but they all play. But this one is uh, your the heaviest. I mean, this is 71, I think, and it's the heaviest record in the world. Oh, God, it's seven minutes. I've only just got in it. This is going to be far too long. Sweet Leaf After Forever, Children of the Grave, Into the Void, A Rock Fest, Smashing Album. Again, you, you kind of want all the first albums. These are all flawless, pretty much. Volume 4, uh, my main criticism is I never liked the cover. Someone told me before that the cover was, they thought the cover was pure amazing. That is a shite cover. Uh, this might have the it is and that because of that picture is why i wanted a gibson sg um it kind of looks red there mine's red but it's not red it's you know cherry red uh again these these things these albums progress so this one's like a sort of detuned sludge fest this one's a little bit more um upbeat um it's fantastic feels of confusion sweetly uh, tomorrow's dream it's got the one really shit Sabbath song it's called FX which I pure hate it's just like some Tony Iommi arsing about with a an effect like an echo pedal it just kind of goes Ooh, do, 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 ding, ding. And it just ruins a whole fucking album at the end of it it does have Super Knot which is fantastic so it's kind of this is what one of those records you kind of go ah, just wish that wasn't on it or I wish it was at the end of the side so you could just end the side and put the other side on Snowbine Cornucopia Laguna Sunrise and Vita's Dance Under the Sun. These are songs that I want to do and after the end. Um, fantastic. We wish to thank the great Coca-Cola company. This is the album that actually cost more, they spent more money on cocaine making it than they did on uh, buying, on, on actually recording the album. It was, it was given to Gordon from June in Christmas 1972, which is written on pen on the front. This one, is this, this is an expensive album. It's on, I've got the expensive one. It, this is a vertical one. 2004. This isn't my original one either. I, like, again, I had the, the, the non-gatefold one. And I would have given that to somebody I was teaching guitar to. You know, spread, to spread the love about. There's no point in having two copies of the same thing. So, volume four. Absolutely fantastic. I don't know whether it's overlooked or not. But, great. Now we're getting into the real heavy hitters. Sabbath Buddy Sabbath is absolutely brilliant uh this album cover i found out only last year or something like that the guy who did this album cover and the back cover went on to do the star the original star wars posters and you look at it you kind of go oh aye, you can sort of see a similar sort of thing very satanic looking it was a, nothing to do with satanic and it's got a spooky picture on the inside of them so this this was on my wall at home as well um them looking a bit spooky in a room sort of see-through uh this has this is again is my second copy um because my first copy is here, which is a little bit more scratchy. But this one has the lyric sheet in it, I think, if you remember. Yeah, so this one comes with a 
the lyric, lyrics written on the inner sleeve. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Fantastic. I'm, try, I'm trying to speed up now. I realise how long I'm talking for. This is my favourite one. This is the best album. Probably my favourite album of all time. Uh, I did a thing I don't know, a few months ago where I was uh, talking about my top 10 most influential albums. This one. I I bought this very early. This is my, maybe the first record I bought, I think, of Sabbath. This and this. And I had the two of them on a cassette. And they were just back to back. And it's like, what a combo. Now, this is just... It's it's their best work. It's they're kind of almost going prog now. It's like it's like mad if you listen to the Beatles the way you can sort of tell if you're, someone gave you a beat. Here's a Beatles song that they recorded when they were doing an album, but you and you've never heard it. But I'm not going to tell you which album it's from. Immediately you know when it's from because it just progresses. They did they varied so much. Sabbath are the same. Um, this is when they got it got really pretty adventurous uh, like production stuff they've got like sort of choirs and stuff on it it's got Hole in the Sky don't... And, and an intro to Tempted of the Universe which is the best riff ever Megalomania it's awesome Thrill of it all is is good Superzars that one with the sort of gothic choir in it. am I going insane and the Ritz it's just amazing belt of an album you should get it this one's got a sort of an original one so it's got a sort of clothy cover I don't think it's a, it's a different record label at this point NEMS Whatever that means, I don't know. I'm, I'm not one for buying, you know, oh, this record's different because it's got, like, you know, it's got a different thing written in the groove and all that. That's not really my thing. I will buy it if it's gatefold, as a, you know, buy the more expensive one if it's, like, a picture on it or it's got a slightly different cover or something. I'm not really interested in, you know, serial numbers and stuff like that. Uh, but this is my original one. It's also got a secret track at the end, which I don't think was on the CD. Um, like at the end of the writ it kind of fades out if you turn the volume up there's a wee bit I'd never heard of such a thing as a secret track like it's got a wee 20 second thing everybody likes to blow on a drug or a blow on a jug or something but laugh right and then now it gets a wee bit controversial because I really like Technical Ecstasy this one's is what 76 or something um, and a lot of people just it, no it's not Sabbath this is a pure futuristic computery sounding bizarre thing uh, I've actually got two copies of that here I think that's maybe because this one came I, think it, I, I never had it originally with a lyric sheet Aye. so this one's got like a a lyric sheet with sort of bits of engine with bits of, sort of graphics that kind of go with a pure crazy cover which always reminded me of Cumbernauld Town Centre that's what I thought that looked like there's escalators in Cumbernauld Town Centre that looks very much like this um, again I, I love this album it's it's a controversial one though uh, a lot of people can't, can't stand it um, but I rate it probably not as highly out of the ones we've done so far it's probably not as good as any of them probably although I might like it but then I can't like it more than Paranoid but because none of these songs are ones you've ever heard of you know none of these make it onto any greatest hits so you never hear them they're all new so I really like this one um, Backstreet Kids You Won't Change Me oh it's alright it's like an acoustic one Gypsy brilliant all moving parts stand still, brilliant. These are some, some of these are mad synthesizer things. Sabbath Bloody Sabbath went a wee bit synthesizer because I think Tony got a a synth pedal uh, for his guitar. So technical ecstasy, which I've got two copies of. I must have um, I don't know why I, did, I maybe didn't didn't give that to one of the, my guitar students because and you don't want to put people off. <laughs> if, you're, if, you, if you've not heard it, it's totally awesome. Worth getting. Another big controversial one. Never Say Die, which everyone says is shit. Uh, even the band say it's shit. But I like it. There's a couple of songs on it I don't really like very much. Um, even got a sleeve on it. I bought it in 95 for a fiver. A fiver? That's an expensive one. Never Say Die, Johnny Blades, awesome. Junior's Eyes, I can never remember which song that is. Hard Roads, awesome. Shockwave, Air Dance, Over to You, Breakout, Swing in the Chain are sort of crazy... I think the the band were sort of falling to bits at this point. I think Ozzy had left and then Ozzy came back and refused to use any of the stuff that had whoever it was they got in to replace him singing and then they end up having to do other ones and kind of throw it together. And I think they were full of drugs at the time. So it's a little bit bitty and stuff, but the song Never Say Die, that the first side of it's awesome. Um, and again, this is the, the progressing thing where everyone gets a bit, you know, it's all new. They're, they're, they're definitely going in a direction. There's definitely a, a, a curve you know like for you can you can hear them progressing between each album to get up to this point and that's Aussie gone then Dio joined and it all changed it was no longer music by 
Tony and Geezer Butler. It was Dio wrote things. I and this, this is I went to see. They were Sharon Osborne wouldn't let them use the name Heaven and Hell when they got back together again and whatever year it was. I went to see them. They wouldn't let them use the, the name Black Sabbath because for contract reasons. So they had to go out and tour under Heaven and Hell, which is um, when I went to see them and. It was awesome. My pal Graham came with me and absolutely hated the gig because they never played Paranoid and War Pigs and all that. And it's like, well, they only played this, the two albums they did with Dio. But I think this of it, it is Black Sabbath, yes, but for me it's more Dio because I mean I, I do love Dio. So like kind of you get Dio albums as in you get the sort of there's like two Rainbow albums and then you get the two Sabbath albums and then you get the Dio solo stuff and they kind of go together really well and they all sound like Dio. But it's very different, much more modern and kind of almost. They've, I don't want to say they've stopped progressing, but they've stopped progressing in the Beatlesy way. They're now doing more just rock songs and kind of going, oh, we'll, we'll try and make ourselves sound a little bit more like the hits sort of thing, which is kind of like this. Don't know. I mean, it's got Die Young and Heaven and Hell and Children of the Sea and Neon Nights and Wishing Well. And, you know, it's like they're, they are all good. Uh, and then a second album with Deal called Mob Rules, um, which again. It's it's very similar to that one. Is it maybe even better? I don't know. It's a little bit more rough, um, a bit more dark sounding. So th these are these these two albums. I have I have listened to them a lot. Um, I probably actually prefer this one, but I don't know why. Um, again, worth getting. Anyway, especially um, especially now you can just watch them on YouTube. You know, what I mean, back in the day you used to have to buy these things. I remember when I was buying these in the nineties, you you could buy the CDs if you could find them in the shops. You know, like Virgin and HMV didn't necessarily have all the albums. They would only have a couple of them and they would be like a 10 or a 15 quid for a CD. And I was buying, you know, the records for a pound and stuff, for two pound. Uh, yeah, no, so the two Dio albums, both pretty good. Another controversial one coming up. Look at that album cover. This is Ian Gillen from Deep Purple <laughs> singing it. Look how mad that they all look at this particular point. Um... I, I really like this. It's got terrible production. It sounds really, it sounds like it's got a pillow over the speakers and stuff. There's actually, um, if you look on YouTube, there is it. They did re, uh, remix it from the master tapes to make it sound like a normal record. But I, for me, it works, and I like it. Um, super unpopular. Um, we don't do any of these stuff in the Black Sabbath band because um, we've got we've got a, we've got a guy who sounds totally like Ozzy, our new guy Brian. Um, so we're doing Ozzy stuff just now, kind of pretty much off the first three albums and um. I've managed to push in a couple from volume four and I will eventually manage to squeeze in some Sabbath Bloody Sabbath and Sabotage because that those are my, my two favourite ones. But um, this, again, hilarious and it's Ian Gillen, top form. Uh, I think he just was pissed the whole time. And on, on tour, this one, Bill Ward uh, left. He was on the album, but he left and it was Bev Bevan from ELO on the move. So he was like sort of Ian Gillen and Bev Bevan and then Tony and Geezer um, great stuff digital bitch awesome awesome right and that's basically the Black Sabbath albums I'm going to keep going because I did to buy other ones and these ones I've honestly I never liked there's a Tony Iommi solo album um, which he wasn't allowed to call a solo, a solo album so he had to the record company made him call it Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi seventh star um, it's alright it's got uh, what's this what's this the song on it. I've not listened to this in years. See, I might, I might like it. I've got, now I've got these records out, I'm going to listen to them again. Um, Living in the street, ain't no stranger to love. Has got a video and it's Glenn Hughes sings on that one. I don't know if he sings on the whole album. Maybe he does sing on the whole album. Um, it shows you how often I've listened to it, but it really does, it's not Black Sabbath. But I mean, it's not meant to be. It was a Tony Iommi solo album. And um, that video, is a, it's got a black and white video and it's... Um, I've been just been watching Star Trek The Next Generation. N Natasha Yar is the girl in the video. So, can't, I can't say much about it. I don't really know it. Uh, I just bought these because they were, you know, a pound at the time. This one, The Eternal Idol, I don't know anything about whatsoever. Rise up to the shining. Okay, I do know a couple of the songs. I think maybe that's from relatively recently watching uh, live concerts. Uh, that's Tony Martin's now the singer. So, don't really know much about that, I'm afraid. No, sorry. I think I don't know if I've I don't have I missed any. Did they go from like nineteen eighty three to that solo album? They might have. Headless Cross. Uh, I don't. I've got the. It's a picture disc I've got for some reason. You can see I bought it because it was two pound fifty. But um, this I actually quite like this album. 
it's got a good video. <laughs> um, the song Headless Cross. Again, I'm, for me, these aren't real. They're still good, good music. It's not real, really Sabbath anymore. I'm, I'm, now, I'm now skipping to them pretty fast. Tear, or Tear, which I always liked the cover of. It's from like 1990 or something. And um, awesome, like, uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't know this album at all. I've, I've listened to it and none of it's stuck, so I don't know. And that's all the Sabbath albums, as far as I'm aware. There is one, there was one called Forbidden, there was one, no, there was a, actually there's one that's good, which I don't have, I need to get, called Dehumanizer, which is uh, when uh, Dio came back again. I need to, I need to dig that out, because I actually remember listening to that on YouTube and thinking, this is really, I really liked it. It doesn't sound like Sabbath, but I mean, I really liked it. And um, there's one called Forbidden, which I remember being a bit controversial at the time. That was like about 95, 96, because uh, I think Ice-T was on it, and it was meant to, I think it's got like a uh, rap on it and stuff. I don't know. Um, so I, that kind of lost it. And then they've got their album 13, which I'd, I've got the CD of. And uh, I just didn't didn't like it at all. It was like totally, it was, let's just write something that sounds like Black Sabbath as opposed to being any sort of music. And it. that's going to be really unpopular in my band because uh, especially the guitarist pure thinks that album's really good. And it's like, I just didn't, it's nothing to me. Yeah, so live albums. This is why apparently Dio left or got sacked from um, the band Double Live Album, which is actually pretty good, but I could never handle it because the songs, that the deal ones, like, the first are brilliant, but I don't want to hear Dio singing NIB and War Pigs and stuff. It's like, I don't think he really wanted to be doing it either. If it was just the live album that just had the Dio era stuff on it, this would be awesome. Um, but he, he, could, he left the band because apparently he was accused of sneaking into changed the vocals once everyone else had gone home and remixing it and blah, 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 but they fell out and it was, I think it was all to do with the fact that the the guy recording it was just a total jake and um, was kind of, kind of telling stories about why things had fucked up, so they obviously made up when he came back for the Heaven and Hell thing, but I quite like this because you can kind of, it's got like the song titles, so there's like the Mob Rules guy, there's obviously a war pig and it's like, that'll be a neon night and then a Heaven and Hell and a voodoo and so I thought I quite liked that. Um, Live at last. Um, again, the guys in the band really like this. It, I, I always thought it sounded a bit muddy. Um, it, this has been re-released recently. Or when I say recently, I mean in the last 10 years, or maybe the last 15 years on CD, and it's got like an extra disc on it, and they've cleaned it up a bit, called Past Lives. Um, I, it's, it's all right. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a volume four tour, I think. Um, it's okay. Not, not a huge fan of that one. This is a bootleg of 1975 concert, um, which I'll be totally honest, I think I used to have this in CD and listen to it a lot, but I'm not sure if this record is. I mean, I look, I paid £13 for a record. Wow. Um, that is a bootleg, though. Uh, I think this might actually be, you know, I was saying there with the Live at Last, it came out as a, a two CD thing, like a few years ago. I think it might actually be this concert that's on. I think this might be the two CDs of of uh, past lives, not sure. And then a couple of compilations to end up. We sold our soul for rock and roll. I bought this because it's got Wicked World on it, which is a song I'd never heard up until this point because it's it's on the, the American version of the first album. It's not on any of the UK albums, so I bought this just for that, really. Um, just a, Jesus. Just a, just a compilation. That seems all right. I said they, I was actually talking to Rob, the guitarist, no, the, the the drummer in the band. He said he bought that. He bought this because it had. He thought there was other songs on it. You know, I was saying earlier that some of the songs were split into a medley in the American ones, but they're not. They're not written on that on the back of this. Maybe he bought the CD that had it on it. But yeah, that's all right. Yep. And then the last one, and also the first. I bought this on tape. This is Black Sabbath Greatest Hits, which has got the cover painting by I can't remember what the guy's name is. Cover painting by L. Yeah. El Trubin, Trinfo de la Murti by Bugil El Vigo. Don't know, some mad old painting of hell. Obviously, it's an awesome cover. I bought this just because I had the cassette back in the days. If anyone remembers cassettes, you used to get, because the tape was like sort of rectangular shaped, it would just have this on it with a black bit at the top and a black bit at the bottom. So the, you know, the actual bit on the tape, the cover was only that size, the bit with this. And I always liked it, thought it was awesome. Um, so it's kind of, kind of strange mix. It's got a Sabbath Bloody Sabbath on it, which means it must be after Sabbath Bloody Sabbath came out, Paranoid NIB changes 
Iron Man, Black Sabbath, War Pigs, okay. And then Laguna Sunrise, which is like an instrumental. And it's like, why why did they put that on this? Tomorrow's Dream and Sweet Leaf. So basically it all makes sense apart from Laguna Sunrise, which I don't know why it's on this. I mean, you, I would have thought you would have put, like, why is Children in the Grave not on it? Don't know. So there was my Sabbath records. It took 25 minutes. I was going to try and do it in 10. Um, yes. So basically I, I would buy, the first six are essential, basically. Pretty much, I'm going to, I'm going to give them, I'll give them all five star, uh, t- 10 out of 10 and then I, I give uh, Technical Ecstasy 10 out of 10 as well it's a bit odd and not an awful lot of people like it um, and then Never Say Die you, I think you've got to have it so you've got all the Aussie albums right? it's not it's not going to get 10 out of 10 for me though um, if it, maybe, maybe if it only had one side it would be a bit higher the two Dio albums are great but again I don't really see them as playing Black Sabbath they are Dio now, you know, Sabbath is gone by this point. Um, Born Again, I like. Again, it's not really Black Sabbath, though. For me. Controversial, I know. Rock on. I don't even know if I'm going to post this video. 26 minutes. I wonder if I can do it again in 10. Anyway, I'll put it up anyway. If anyone complains, I'll just pull it. Rock and roll.